Have you been dying to know what x cubed minus 126 divided by x minus 5 is? Well, die no more, because I'm going to help you out. First thing is, I hate writing it like this. Let's write it in long division form. Take a look. Bam. So to write that in long division form, all we're going to do is take the item to the right-hand side of the division symbol, and we're going to place that on the outside of your long division symbol. Okay, and then what's ever here on the left-hand side gets plugged inside. Simple enough. Now, what's the goal? What you're going to do is you're going to look at the uh, largest power of your variable in your divisor, which is basically just, it's just this term, right? It's just going to be x, x to the first. If you had, let's say, out here 2x squared, then I would have been considering this term. This would be the term that has the highest power of x in it, all right? But in this one, it's so simple, it's just going to be the x. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look to take that term and divide it into the term here in the dividend uh, that has the highest power of x. So this term here has the highest power of x. So basically I'm going to take the di divisor, okay, this term in the divisor, and divide it into that term in the dividend. Okay, so it's going to look like this, x cubed divided by then x. And what do you think that works out to be? Right, just x squared. This is now part of your quotient. So that gets plugged into the top here, on top of your long division symbol. It doesn't matter where you place this thing. It doesn't matter where along the continuum you place it. Who cares? A lot of times, some people place it over here, some place it on top. Who cares? Uh, just place it somewhere, all right, above the line on your long division symbol. Now, after you do that, next thing is I want you to set this up. Minus sign and then two parentheses. What you're now going to do is you're going to take this term and you're going to distribute it to now each of the two terms in your divisor, and those terms will now be written down here. Okay? So let's do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the x squared multiplied by x, that should be x cubed, and this should always happen, where whatever term this was, it should match now uh, what term this is, okay, if you did the division correctly. Um, and now you're going to take the x squared multiplied by the minus 5, basically, and that's going to be a minus now. Uh, 5x squared. Okay, now before you do any math, take the negative symbol out here and distribute it now to each of the two terms inside of your parentheses. Okay, so the first term becomes negative, and the second term will become positive, right, because of the double negative there would be, so that's positive and that's going to be a negative. Good. Now add the terms on together. These will annihilate one another, and what you're left with now is you're like, wait a minute, can I add those two? I can't add those two. They're not, they don't have like bases, right? This has an x squared in it. This doesn't have any x. Uh, so can, I can't add them. You're absolutely right. You can't add them. So don't add them. Just rewrite it. 5x squared minus 126. Now this basically becomes your new dividend. And we're going to repeat the process again. You're going to take this term from your divisor and divide it into the highest powered x term in your dividend, which is this. Okay, do the math on the side. So now it's going to be 5x squared all over x. And that should now simplify to just 5x and a positive 5x, right? If I don't have a sign in there, it's assumed to be positive, okay? So now that's what you're going to write, positive or plus 5x. Cool. Now, same process, minus sign, parentheses, and now take this thing, the plus 5x, and distribute it to each of the two terms in your divisor. Okay, so the first one will be 5x squared. And then the second term, the 5x multiplied by the negative 5, should be negative now 25x. Cool? Great. Now, distribute the negative symbol to each of the terms inside of that parenthesis. Okay, careful, you're going to have a double negative, right? So this, what I like to do is whenever I erase the parentheses and I have a negative sign in there, all I do is I go like this. I don't erase it. I just turn it into a positive. Okay? Turn those negatives into positives, baby. That's the right way to approach life. So now all you got to do is now uh, just simply, right, add these together. They are going to annihilate one another. And then you add these two together. But you can't really do it because they're not like bases. So that's okay. Just rewrite it. 25x minus then 126. So guess what? This is now your new, uh, this is now your new dividend, right? So you're going to ask yourself, can I take this x and somehow divide it into now any one of these to simplify it somehow? And yes, you can actually, right? You can, you can bring it into this term. So why don't we do that? Okay, so we're going to say 25x now all over x, that just works out to be 25. Okay, fantastic. 
So now it's a positive 25, so go back up into your quotient and add now 25, because remember, these values are all the quotient values, okay? Now you're gonna take that 25 and distribute it to each of those two terms in the divisor. But remember, first thing, put your parentheses in the minus symbol. So when you do this, it's gonna work out to be 25x, because 25 times x is 25x, and then 25 multiplied by five, uh-oh, I don't have a calculator handy. Oh, what's it gonna be? Oh, okay, negative 125. That was a close one. Now, take that negative symbol and don't, don't you feel like that when you're like, oh no, wait, 25 times five, where's the calculator? Right? Actually, try to, try to, you know, try to challenge yourself a little bit, actually. I have, a, uh, I have a student who, I started with him really young, and he would always be kind of like inspired a little bit by the mental math I was able to do. Not that I'm any type of mental math, uh, you know, Olympian here. Um, but uh, it was always like, hey, how'd you do that in your head? I'm like, you can do it too. You just got to practice, right? And lo and behold, he's in high school now, and he does it faster than I can. <laughs> so it's quite amazing. But anyway, whatever you want to do in life, just practice and put in the time, okay? You can become good at anything. You just got to put in the time and practice. Take the negative symbol here and distribute it now into each term inside of those parentheses, okay? Remember, you'll have a double negative, and we're going to take that life advice of turn the negative into a positive, all right? And then simply now add these terms together. That's going to totally annihilate one another. And what you're left with now is you're going to be left with a negative one. Now, here's where I'm basically going to stop because I can't, I, you know, when I'm looking at X and I'm going to think about it, can I divide it into negative one? No, you really can't. You can't simplify it anymore, right? So that's kind of the idea. When you're doing this on out, you're constantly looking to simplify, right? Those X's essentially. All right. Now, uh, since you do have a remainder other than zero down there, what you're going to do is take this value. So it's going to be minus, okay, it's a negative minus one over, and then whatever your divisor is, it's going to be x minus five, okay? You might feel uncomfortable. Why did I separate the negative sign there? It's going to be, ba it's the same thing as saying this, plus, okay, negative one over x minus five. Take that remainder, put the divisor under it, and you're done. I just don't like writing it like that. I like writing it because essentially it works out to be that, okay, without so many signs. So guess what, ladies and gentlemen, this is indeed your quotient. This is the quotient, okay, and that's how you do long division. If you wanted to check yourself now, what you can do, and I don't know if I'm, you know what, I should, yeah, I'll do it anyway, I'll do it anyway. What you're going to do is you can now basically just plug in an x value and see if you're right. Okay, see if it works out. So in other words, what you did was this. You took this term and divided it by this thing. So if I wrote it like this, x cubed, minus 126, all over then x minus 5, right? Uh, has to equal now, somehow, it has to equal now x squared plus 5x plus 25 minus now 1 over x minus 5, okay? because this was the quotient, right? So remember, that's what we did, right? We took our dividend, divided it by our divisor, and then that should equal the quotient. Whoever came up with these words for this, I just wanna give a big giant hug to. How about you? No, you can't do that to them. No, don't, don't think that way. No, 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 no. Remember, negatives into positives, okay? So what we now can do is select any X value you like. I'm gonna choose one that might make the math here, just as I'm looking at it, a little bit easier, but you're really free to choose any number you want, except for five. The reason why five minus five will be zero, this whole denominator goes to zero, and that's just gonna be undefined, okay? So maybe, why don't we choose one close to that? Maybe x is equal to positive four, all right? So you're gonna have four cubed minus then 126, all divided by four minus five, and that should equal now four squared plus five times four, plus 25 minus now one over four minus five, okay? So four cubed is going to, I'll do the math over here a little bit. Uh, so four cubed is gonna be uh, 64. That's gonna be minus then the 126. Whoops, almost made a mistake there. And when you do this math on out, it comes out to be 62, okay? So this numerator here should be 62, all right? So it's gonna be 62 over now, that works out to be a negative one. And that's gonna be equal to now 16, plus then 20, plus then 25. This looks like minus one over negative one. 
So it's a double negative there, right? So it's just going to be plus one, okay, plus one. So let's see what this comes out to be, right? So we got 25 plus 20 is going to be 45, right? That's gonna be 45, okay? 45 now plus 16, you could think about it like six, six, instead of 16, you can think about 15, and you know 45 plus 15 would be 60, right? So if that's 16, then that would be 61. So when you can add now 16 to the, that became 61. Uh, oh my God, I did it again, 16. Wow, that's actually really strange, right? Isn't that crazy? My mind was like on fire there for two seconds because I was saying 45 plus 16 is gonna be 61, but yet I'm writing 16, but I'm, my mind's thinking 61. It's like, wow. Wow. I guess that's what psychedelics might feel like. I'm not really sure. I never tried it. I don't suggest you do either. But maybe it's like that. Who knows? Anyway, 16, you're going to write there. So 16 plus the 45 is going to be equal to 61. But then you got the other one over here, right? So that's going to be 62. So 62, okay, is equal to now, wait a minute. What did I do? I'm looking at this now, right? I'm like, oh, no, no, no. What did you do? What did you do? This is a positive 62, and this is now going to be negative. You silly goose. You missed the negative sign up here, right? Because that's really 64, like I was saying, minus then the 126. That has to be negative, and oh, good. Okay, right? Notice how we all make mistakes, right? We all can miss stuff, but don't you just go back. You go back, and you double-check yourself, right? You got to be confident in the math, and when it doesn't work out, when the way it should, meaning these two sh these two sides of the equation better equal one another, right? 62, the positive 62 better equal positive 62. You know, there's an error somewhere. No big deal. Just go back and double check, all right? Uh, but as you can see now, it totally works out. All the math makes sense. Now I'm convinced that this quotient is indeed the quotient, right? This quotient is the answer when you take the dividend and divide it by the divisor. My God, I really want to give that person a hug. Anyway. Thanks for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. Thank you so very much for watching. If this video helped you out at all, by the way, like and subscribe. Maybe you can tell some of your classmates, your friends. We love to help more people, all right? And we wouldn't be here without you. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And good luck with your classes. Hopefully it's not too stressful at the moment, although I know probably from the work you're looking at on the screen, you're probably like, oh my God, my mind is absolutely on fire. And um, hopefully I'm providing a fire extinguisher for you, but uh, we'll see. Take care.